Hello, I'm Dazzling One, and today I want to discuss the topic of the deep web. Forgive me if my voice is a little bit off, I have a bit of a cold. So, I didn't know too much about it until I was researching for my speech and communications class. I was doing the topic of the Bitcoin, which led me down the road of learning about Silk Road and the deep web. To begin, I want to talk about the internet. We all know what it is, or else you wouldn't be watching this video right now. Internet can be described as being in layers. It is estimated we only use about 4% of it, while 96% of it is hidden from a general search engine like Google, Yahoo, or Bing. The best analogy is that if you were to look at an iceberg, you could see there's the top of it, and then there's below the ocean, which is where most of the iceberg actually is. So, internet is in levels. Level one would be the surface web. That would be where well-known social media sites like Facebook, YouTube, Google, or Twitter are. Level two would be academic databases that universities may use, personal information, financial records. To access this level, you need a username and a password. Level three is the deep web. That's illicit drugs, child porn, stolen credit card numbers, human trafficking, weapons, exotic animals. To reach this level, you need to use a Tor browser. And what Tor does is it bounces communication off servers around the world to make it difficult to detect the user's IP address. It's not used for bad all of the time, but many people affiliate it with that because of all of the deep web horror stories. And level four is more theoretical. It's called Mariana's Web. It's named after the deepest trench in the ocean called Mariana's Trench. And this level is more speculative than anything. Some people say it doesn't exist. It's like computer science fiction. And what it is, is it supposedly has all of humanity's best kept secrets, say the location of Atlantis, and some say in order to, you would need a quantum computer which isn't in existence at this time. Or some would say it would be like Fast and Furious 7, they had God's eye and it was able to track any person in the world or location at any moment. Either way, this is where all of our surveillance is. So just some background on the deep web. Many people confuse it with the dark net. And so the deep web is every place that cannot be accessed by a general search engine. And once again, you can have access to academic archives, library databases. It's also a hundred times larger than what is known as the surface web or clear net. Whereas the dark net isn't accessible through search engines at all. It's the anonymous internet. No one knows your identity and no one knows who is behind any website. This is where people go to look up stuff when they don't want to be found. And Tor stands for the onion router. Onions have many layers as does Tor. It was created by the U.S. military surveillance in the year 1995, when military scientists at the Naval Research Laboratory began developing cloaking technology that would prevent someone's activity on the internet from being traced back to them. They called it onion routing, a method of redirecting traffic into a parallel peer-to-peer -peer network and bouncing it around randomly before sending it off to its final destination. The ideal was to move it around so as to confuse and disconnect and it's funded by DARPA. Once again, the purpose is to cloak the online identity of government agents and informants while they are in the field, gathering intelligence, setting up sting operations, giving human intelligence assets a way to report back to their handlers. Much of Tor has been and still funded by the Pentagon or related arms. Often through Tor, DuckDuckGo is located in Tor as a search engine and it emphasizes protecting searchers' privacy and avoiding filter bubbles or personalized search results. If you try the same URL through Chrome, it won't work. One of the main resources for navigating the dark web is Hidden Wiki and it's almost like the home page of it. It will provide you with links to certain sites about different topics. But just as a warning, although Tor does allow you to remain anonymous, your PC can still be identified as using a Tor network, which if the NSA sees this, they could tag you for using Tor. Even if your searches are supposedly anonymous, this is why people go a step further and download a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network, which enables them to connect the internet through a remote server which is located out of the country and therefore is impossible to track. So in case you're wondering how you do access the dark net, if you want to surf it, 
you're going to have to download Tor and then you're going to have to use a VPN. And then once you do so, you can surf it through the search engine DuckDuckGo. Now just some security advice if you're going to do so. Turn off running scripts in the Tor option. Click the button just before the address bar because most of the sites in the darknet are criminal in nature. If you land on one, if you land on one, they might want to trace you down and scripts created using JavaScript can be dangerous if they manage to store something on your computer. Think twice before you click on a link. You do not know who operates the website and where any of these links lead to. Use only known directories to reach authenticated destinations. And this one for sure, do not download anything to your computer. There is so much malware on the dark web. No BitTorrents and no downloads as they may give away your actual IP address when storing things to your computer. And oftentimes when people are buying illegal drugs and so forth, they use a PGP, which means pretty good privacy. It's an encryption to protect their mailing address when they want it shipped to them. Some other engines used to access the deep web, I2P, Freenet, and ZeroNet. So the main currency of the deep web is the Bitcoin. And what the Bitcoin is, is a decentralized currency, meaning that it's independent of a third party, say a bank, a building, a server. What makes the third party so crucial with other types of currency is that there needs to be a ledger to keep track of online payments. Because whenever you're making a transaction, the bank needs to know that you're not trying to make it twice. And so the way this problem was solved with the Bitcoin is that the ledger is distributed throughout the peer-to-peer -peer network. Anyone interested in mining Bitcoins, they download the mining software to their computer and they solve cryptographic puzzles. Now cryptography is the art of decoding computer code. When people mine Bitcoins, they generate them, but they also are making sure that no one is trying to do anything fraudulent with the Bitcoin. What makes the Bitcoin so valuable is that you're able to remain anonymous with your transactions, you can avoid exchange rates, it's a quick way to do business, and some companies are opening up to the use of the Bitcoin. You can give Bitcoin donations, you can buy things from Dell, Dish Network, I believe eBay is getting on board but it is the currency of choice in the deep web because a lot of things, say if you're buying any sort of contraband, you're going to want to use something that you're able to remain anonymous with your transaction because if you're using your PayPal, they can easily track you. Since the creation of the Bitcoin in 2009 and the creator of it is anonymous, no one really knows. They just went under the alias of Satoshi Nakamoto and the US recognized the Bitcoin in 2013 as a decentralized currency. The IRS decided that in March of 2014, they were going to start taxing the Bitcoin as property, which some people see this as legitimizing it. Furthermore, while others see it as impeding upon our privacy and it's up to the states to decide how they want to deal with the Bitcoin because its popularity is growing. February of 2015 it was worth 255 US dollars. So once again it is the currency of choice in the deep web sites that you can access but also other decentralized currencies have sprung up like the Doja coin, the Maza coin, and so there are some positives to accessing the deep web, say freedom of speech, activists use it, whistleblowers. Edward Snowden leaked a lot of what we know him for onto the deep web first. Revolutions can be started as well or organized. Arab Spring was organized on the deep web and journalists oftentimes use it, especially in countries like North Korea where they don't have access to the regular web because of censorship in their country. Of course, we all know the deep web for the illegal activity that take place on it. And remember Ashley Madison, that whole scandal? Well, there is a website that allows anyone who wants to pay for everyone whose information was leaked from Ashley Madison. There's also places on the deep web where you can get fake IDs and passports. There's places where you can steal someone's credit card information. Like I said earlier, malware is a huge thing, which you have to be so very careful if you're browsing the deep web, because you can pick up a lot of malware and computer viruses from doing so. The Cicada 3301, every January on the deep web, it's this complex puzzle and they look for the brightest to solve it. It's a coding puzzle and so some people think that this is the US government's way of recruiting people to work for them. And then prostitution, human trafficking is huge on the deep web as well. Illegal drugs, and this gets into Silk Road, which 
it was a huge scandal because Ross Yulbrick, the alleged manager of Silk Road, he is facing life in prison or 30 years at the minimum. His trial began in January of this year. Silk Road was busted up in October of 2013 and it was taken down but since then it has been put back up. And this is the thing about these dark net websites is that they'll be taken down but people will put up a new version of it. And there are many other sites on the dark net that you can buy illegal drugs. So another just horrifying prevailing theme on the dark net is red rooms. And some of these viewers can be invited by someone or they can pay their way in with bitcoins and the audience gets to watch in real time a slave usually in a country in Africa or in the Middle East usually a man or a woman but sometimes a child they're hung on chains the people on the online chat room bid and pay for the ways that they want to see this person tortured and that can include skinning the victim alive burning them cutting off their limbs without any anesthesia Usually the people that partake in this are fairly wealthy people. Some of the people who have stumbled into these chat rooms say that they were just traumatized and they could not finish a session. Another huge feature of the dark net that we often hear about is child porn. There's so much of it. One of the largest child porn sites was called Freedom Hosting and Eric Marquez, the alleged founder, was arrested for charges accusing him of being, in the words of an FBI agent to an Irish court, the largest facilitator of child porn on the planet. So you can just imagine the amount of people on this site who are looking at child porn. The sad thing about the dark net, like I said, while it can be used for people who are in censored countries to find out what's going on in the world, you oftentimes have a lot of people who are pedophiles, rapists, serial killers, psychopaths really using this to hide. Another huge prevailing theme is pedophilia. There was a website called Violent Desires. They had members in the thousands. This is where people discussed ways and how to kidnap a child and torture and rape them. A lot of missing children are thought to be on the deep web and some of these the FBI and all knows about this. And some people say, well, why aren't they putting a stop to this? Some people think it's because they want to maintain a balance of good and evil. Other people think that they're not fully aware. Other people think it's all one huge conspiracy. But either way, this is sick and disgusting. There's also sites where serial killers can share their pictures and once again, chat rooms of people watching people get killed in real time, just murders taking place. There are cannibal sites. One is called IRL Cannibals. And there are sites where people in a forum will discuss their desire to eat human flesh as well as people's desire to be eaten and they will make deals with the cannibal for money for their family and they meet up and arrange a time. It's just gross. And then there is also the aspect of people hiring hitmen or assassins and contract killings and the prices range depending upon who you want to kill and if they're a high profile individual of course you're going to pay out larger sum, but you can put out hits on anyone, your boss, your next door neighbor, president. It's crazy, isn't it? There's another site known as Pink Meth. This site is used for blackmailing and what happens is that the personal phone number, IP address, images from the person's hard drive, and even your webcam, if you didn't know this, can be switched on at any time. So if you have a computer, you might want to cover up your webcam whenever you're not using it because a lot of these sickos in the deep web have sites devoted to switching on random people's webcams or activating them and watching people. It's creepy. Just imagine the children they're watching and a profile is made about them for anyone who stumbles across the site in the dark net to look at and it's used as a form of blackmailing. And another similar site is called 8chan. It can also be accessed on the surface web. It's where the personal information of a person that is the desired target is posted until the person's life is ruined because of threats and stalking. And another site, some people say that this one's more of a hoax. I believe such a thing can exist and it's called the human experiment. It hasn't been updated since 2011 and what it was 
it had pictures, like graphic pictures of homeless people who were abducted, sometimes even pregnant women, tortured, exposed to radiation, had diseases injected into them, and many other various forms of human experimentation, much like the Nazis were known for doing. And after they were done, they disposed of their bodies by throwing them in dumpsters of meat shop. Another site was the Cruel Onion Wiki, and this was the mutilation rape of animals by crushing their parts skinning them alive and oftentimes it would have women in videos or pictures crushing these animals to death with their bare feet or stilettos until the animal was killed. The FBI did shut this site down but it continues to come back because people love these kinds of disgusting sites. I mean there has to be an audience. I don't understand how anyone would want to see an animal or a child or any living human being tortured. It's just gross. And then there was another site called Zoophilia. It was used to show bestiality, animal torture, and of course the mutilation and murder of third world country children under the age of 12. And then just a couple of others that go hand in hand. There was a site called No Limits Fun, and this film is still circulating for thousand dollars I believe. And it was a snuff film, it had two women and three men in it, and I'm not going to go into details. I'll leave the link to a video that goes into detail describing everything that happens in it. Pretty much they raped these children, some were only infants, they tortured them, they used them as human pillows for a pillow fight, it was just disgusting. Another one was Daisy's Destruction, this film selling for around 10000 A man by the name of Peter Scully, he went to the Philippines with the help of his two teenage girlfriends. They lured in young girls by offering them food and they filmed themselves raping and killing children. One was as young as 18 months old, so they were only a toddler. They destroyed her internal organs, dismembered her limbs while bound. Just some other strange things about the dark net are the video games on it. And one of the more popular ones, if you've been to any gaming channels, you probably heard of it, was Sad Satan. This video game, if you are curious, you can look at parts of it on people's videos that they've posted. No one seems to have the original link, but apparently in the game, you can hear screaming in it. And the screams that you hear randomly in the video are of a girl who was raped. The character is walking through these dark rooms and pictures randomly pop up sporadically of pedophiles. It's usually the same guy. Some people claim that in some of the fake versions there is real child porn pictures. It's just disgusting that people's minds are this twisted. There's also on the dark net just US documents. I've heard there are occult websites among other things. But yes, it's a dark, dark world we live in. And it's crazy to think that <laughs> the internet we know or at least the bulk of us know, isn't what's really out there. And I'm not sure if I want to know what's truly out there, understanding that I, I could potentially run into some of these disgusting sites. So I hope that you found the information that I provided you with on the dark net useful and that you enjoy the video and that you have a wonderful week. Take care and God bless you.